So one of the other major factors that causes uh, many, many peaks to come up on our, on our mass spectrum here, besides fragmentation, is the fact that we have lots of different isotopes of given molecules. So, uh, you know, if we've got uh, these peaks, if we've got peaks on, a, uh, on our mass on our mass spectrum, so we've got our mass spectrum that looks a little bit like this, we've got mass over charge here, and we've got relative intensity here. If we went through using the, uh, if we go through using the relative atomic masses uh, of, of, uh, of the fragments that are coming up in the mass spectrum, then we'll get peaks, you know, we might get a set of peaks that look like this. So say we're using a, uh, a hydrocarbon, if we're going to assume that all of our carbons, if, if, if in fact all of our carbons were carbon 12 and all of our hydrogens were hydrogen 1, then we're going to get all of a set of major peaks caused by the different fragments. And so each of these peaks is going to be caused by a different possible fragment that can be, produ can be produced from the, the, the hydrocarbon molecule that we started with. However, Carbon-12 and hydrogen-1 are not the only isotopes of, uh, of carbon and of hydrogen. We can in fact have carbon-13. We can also have hydrogen-2, among other, and these are, just, these are just examples of one of the isotopes for each of these uh, elements that can exist. And so if we've got carbon-13 and hydrogen-2, although these are very, very rare, uh, and, that, and that is why our our relative atomic mass of carbon is pretty much exactly 12, and our relative atomic mass of hydrogen is pretty much exactly 1. However, there, there are some carbon-13 atoms and some hydrogen-2 atoms out there, and so when we put in a, a sample of our hydrocarbon, some of the molecules of our hydrocarbon will contain carbon-13, and they will contain uh, hydrogen-2. And so what's going to happen then is that if we've got all these peaks, caused by the fragments containing carbon-12 and hydrogen-1. Then if we have, you know, some really small peaks, these peaks are going to be very small because carbon-13 and hydrogen-2 are so rare. However, if we have some fragments containing carbon-13 instead of carbon-12, then we're going to have, you know, a peak, a very small peak, but it's going to be at a slightly higher mass-on-charge ratio than the major peak. So we're going to get one there, one there, and one there. These peaks would not only be caused by fragments containing carbon-13 instead of carbon-12, they could also alternatively contain carbon-12, but they could contain hydrogen-2 instead of hydrogen-1. In just So what, just one of the hydrogen-1 atoms uh, was in fact a hydrogen-2 atom. Sorry, just one of the hydrogen atoms in the molecule was in fact a hydrogen-2 atom. And that would also cause this very small peak to occur at a mass to charge ratio one greater than the original peak. So all we're doing is we're increasing the total mass of our, the, sorry, one greater assuming that the charge is zero. So all we're doing is that if we have hydrogen two instead of one of replacing one of the hydrogen one atoms in one of the, our, our molecules of our hydrocarbon, then, that, then the mass on charge ratio is gonna be one greater than if all of the hydrogens were hydrogen one. That's assuming, again, that the charge is plus one. So basically, we're, we're slightly increasing the mass of our molecule if we, have these, if we have either of these two isotopes here. We're slightly increasing the mass of our entire molecule, and therefore, uh, any fragments containing these isotopes will have slightly higher mass-on-charge ratios, causing these extra little peaks. And so for that reason, each fragment, so each of these major peaks here, uh, can in fact be can in fact uh, be replicated. Can in fact have smaller peaks surrounding surrounding it due to the different very rare isotopes of any of the atoms that are that formed part of this fragment. So if we had you know other atom any other atom uh, that 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 was part of this fra the fragment that caused this peak, then isotopes of that atom uh, would actually cause some other smaller peaks to surround it. So for that reason, it's very important. So it's very important that when we look at uh, when we look at these peaks and we look we try and figure out the fragments that could cause them that we don't so if we if we're starting with our parent molecular iron here so m plus and we're trying to figure out the chemical formulae of the ions that call of the fragment ions that caused these peaks 
it's important not to think that, you know, we've got a peak at a certain mass on charge ratio due to the relative atomic mass of carbon or the relative atomic mass of hydrogen, because that relative atomic mass is purely an average of uh, the masses of all the carbon isotopes out there. So if we've got uh, if we've got 99%, if 99% of the carbon atoms that we have on Earth or in the world are carbon-12 and 1% are, are carbon-13, then the relative atomic mass of carbon is going to be 12.000000, and eventually it's going to be slightly more than 12 due to that 1% of carbon atoms that is carbon-13. So that for that reason, we shouldn't view these these peaks on our mass spectrum as uh, we shouldn't be analysing this using uh, with with the thought of relative atomic masses in our minds. Rather, we should be analysing these with the thought of the different uh, atomic masses of individual isotopes of each element. And so, if we if we're looking at the most common isotopes, carbon twelve or hydrogen one in this case, we should be looking at the fact that you know fragments are going to be caused by uh, atoms contain by molecules containing carbon 12 and hydrogen 1 and we shouldn't be thinking that if we're looking at a fragment containing carbon we shouldn't we can't say that carbon has a mass of 12.000001 we should we have to say that that molecule contains an atom of carbon 12 or it contains an atom of carbon 13 it's one or the other and that is the reason that our mass on charge ratios unless uh unless of course our charge is plus two, however that's quite unusual. Our mass on charge ratios, assuming our charge is plus one, are always at whole numbers because our isotopes can only have whole number masses. They can't have, uh, we're not using relative, relative atomic masses which aren't exact whole numbers, we're using isotopic masses. And so that's very important to be, to be thinking through and analyzing our mass, spectr mass spectrums using isotopic masses rather than relative atomic masses. So here we're gonna look back at the example that we used in our fragmentation video. So again, we're going to look at ethanol. And so I've got, I've drawn the same spectrum that we had last time. However, I've shown a little bit more detail. So again, we're only looking at this top end of the spectrum. So there's a break in our in our horizontal axis here. We're only looking at this these mass on charge ratios above 29. And so I've labelled all the peaks that we that we analysed in the fragmentation video. I've labelled them with the the chemical formulae of the, the chemical formulae of their fragments. So here we've got CH3O plus. We've got this uh, this peak at a at a mass on charge ratio of 29 was either caused by COH plus or C2H5 plus, and so on with the peaks at mass on charge ratios of 45 and 46. However, this time we've got another, an extra five peaks. So we've got peaks A, B, C, D, and E. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at, we're going to go through all the different isotopic combinations that could have caused these peaks that deviated slightly from the main ones at, 20, at, at ratios of 29, 31, 45, and 46. So as I said, usually we're dealing with carbon-12, hydrogen-1, and oxygen 16 and we were assuming that our fragments were made up of these three isotopes when we were when we were calculating the, when we were trying to figure out the chemical formulae corresponding to the fragments at each of these peaks however now obviously peaks a to e have been caused due to uh, varying varying isotopes in our fragments so instead of carbon 12 we could have carbon 13 instead of hydrogen 1 we could have hydrogen 2 Instead of oxygen 16, we could have oxygen 18. So we're going to go through and see what combinations of uh, of uh, isotope changes, so of changes in the isotopes from the left hand side to the right hand side, could have caused each of these uh, each of these peaks. So first of all, peak A. So uh, the peak at mass on charge ratio was either caused of 29 was either caused by COH plus or C2H5 plus. Now, peak A is at a mass on charge of 30, mass on charge ratio of 30. So that means peak A was caused by a fragment with a mass one greater than, uh, the, ma than the fragment that caused the peak at a mass on charge ratio of 29. So if we're looking at the C2H5 plus ion, then uh, this, uh, this peak A could have been caused by 
the if, if this C2H5 plus ion in fact contained one carbon 13, one carbon 12, and five hydrogen ones. So here we've assumed that's meant to be a one. So here we've assumed that we've got two carbon 12s and five hydrogen ones. But peak A could have been caused by a carbon 13 instead of one of the carbon 12s, and the carbon 12 and five, sorry, and five hydrogen ones. Alternatively, we could have still had two carbon 12s, but we could have had one of our hydrogens, in fact, being a hydrogen 2. So we could have had, so we could have had four hydrogen 1s and one hydrogen 2, like that. So again, this is, uh, should be a 1. And so they are the only two options. They are the only two options for the variation in obviously this C2H5 plus ion that could have caused peak A. Alternatively, the same two changes could have happened to this COH plus ion. So we could have had carbon 13, oxygen 16, and hydrogen 1, causing that peak, which would have been an increase in mass of 1 compared to a COH plus ion containing carbon 12, oxygen 16, and hydrogen 1. Alternatively, we could have still had carbon 12 as usual, we could have had oxygen 16, or we, and we could have had hydrogen 2 instead of hydrogen 1, which would have increased the mass by 1. So they are the, the four sort of variations from the regular isotopes in this column, in this column here, They're the variations from this column here that could have caused peak A. Now if we look at peak B, we analyse it in much the same way. So again, we're, we're looking at increases of only 1. So again, we could have had, we've got a mass on charge ratio of 32. And so this could have been caused by, instead of carbon 12, hydrogen 1 and oxygen 16 here, could have been caused by carbon 13, hydrogen 1 and oxygen 16. Could have been caused by carbon 12, two hydrogen ones. One hydrogen two and a regular oxygen. And alternatively, if we want to go one step further, we could say that uh, it could have actually been caused by a COH plus ion containing maybe carbon 13, oxygen 18, which is a mass increase of three, and hydrogen one. Or it could have contained carbon 12, oxygen 18 still and hydrogen 2. So again, we're here we've, we're looking at an increase of 2 due to the different isotope of oxygen and an increase of 1 due to the different isotope of either hydrogen or carbon. Now if we want to look at, that rather than writing out the, the, uh, the, all the possible chemical formulae for the rest of our peaks, we're just going to look at and talk and think about the changes that could have caused each of our peaks. So if we look at peak C, peak C could have been caused by either solely an oxygen 18 uh, atom instead of an oxygen 16 atom in this CH3O plus ion. It could have been caused by two of the hydrogens being hydrogen 2 instead of hydrogen 1. Or it could have been caused by one of the carbons, or the only carbon being carbon 13, and one of the hydrogens being hydrogen 2 instead of hydrogen 1. If we look over to peak D, again there's a few different ways. We could either have had this ion here with a, uh, a a change in the oxygen isotope to oxygen 18. We could have had this ion here with two hydrogen 2s instead of hydrogen 1s. We could have had two carbon 13s instead of carbon 12s. Or we could have had one carbon 13 and one hydrogen 2. Again, we could look at similar changes in either. We could have, if we're looking at the C2H6O plus ion, uh, these changes in this ion could have caused peak D by either having one carbon 13 or one hydrogen 2. And similar changes for peak E. So really what we're looking at is we're looking at how we can make up the difference in the mass on charge ratios uh, of, uh, of these unknown peaks, these small peaks from A, B, these, these small peaks A, B, C, D and E by thinking about the different isotopes that are possible in the frag 
that, that could possibly uh, belong to the fragments that we've already identified. So how could this formula deviate from what we'd usually expect? We would usually expect carbon-12, hydrogen-1, and oxygen-16. However, different isotopes will cause this fragment to in fact cause peaks at different mass on charge ratios. And so we need to be aware of that as another reason uh, that, that we have so many peaks on our mass spectrum. So it's really important to be able to analyze and understand that idea.